There are so many little known stories from the African continent and its diaspora. Unfortunately, many of these interesting stories don't have the privilege of being portrayed on screen, and thus, I wanted to do my part in highlighting them. So today, we're going to be speaking about the brief reign of an African king in Venezuela. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And with a word from our sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com, links to everything in the description box below. The role of African men in early Spanish America was surprisingly diverse. Popular narratives frequently highlight the enslaved status of African men and women during the discovery and settlement of the New World. The Spanish, mostly during the 16th century, had not completely consolidated their power in the Americas, and so many African men in particular found various ways in acquiring their own power or liberty. The ways in which some African men were able to do this was by becoming a so-called black conquistador, many of whom being conscripted, later gaining their freedom. Another was by becoming a pirate, gaining freedom through the open sea. And finally, yet another way was through escaping to the mountains or countryside, establishing independent maroon settlements, becoming sovereign rulers in their own right. This may not sound like many options for us today, but this was actually the best it was going to get for Afro-descended people in this part of the world for centuries. This historical lens is the context in which an African king was going to form. So who was this man? He was called King Miguel Guacamaya, in 1551, Spanish settlers in Venezuela discovered gold in a town near the Buria River. They immediately brought their enslaved Africans to work the mines and founded a city nearby. Miguel was one of these enslaved individuals brought to work in the gold mines. Miguel was proficient in Spanish, which means he may have been enslaved for some time. This shift in responsibilities allowed for opportunities to present itself and Miguel took this chance as soon as fate allowed. And so, in 1555, Miguel escaped captivity, took refuge in the countryside, and began to call on other enslaved people along with the indigenous to unite under one cause. According to one Spanish chronicler, around 180 people answered the call and joined Miguel. From there, the future leader was able to establish a fortified maroon settlement for his followers. Miguel took on the title of King Miguel Guacamaya and formed a royal court consisting of his queen, Guamar, his son, the prince and heir apparent, a bishop, and a series of ministers. This step of establishing a monarchy was a common practice of runaway slave communities before 1700, when many slaves still had direct African roots and therefore knowledge of African forms of monarchy. Under his brief reign, King Miguel organized an army and ordered an attack on the nearby Spanish town of Barquis Meadow, burning it to the ground. The Spanish in the city quickly requested aid, and an armed Spanish expedition led by Diego Losada arrived, destroying the Maroon settlement and eventually executing King Miguel. After his death, some of Miguel's followers continued to harry the Spanish, sabotaging the mines or disrupting overland trade. Furthermore, some of the descendants of Miguel's runaway community seem to have been among the blacks, mulattoes, and indigenous people who inhabited the town of Nagua. People of color established this town in the early 1600s, and it became largely autonomous from Spanish control. It's interesting to note that it was not uncommon for African men to not only free themselves from enslavement, but become rulers of maroon settlements creating hierarchical systems that perhaps mimic their African structures back home. 
As one would imagine, the sustainability of these maroon kingdoms would have been very difficult to muster given the lack of allies, resources, and other forms of privation. Regardless, it's clear that King Miguel was at the forefront of a long tradition of African maroon leaders and kings in the early Spanish Americas, a legacy that should not be forgotten. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.